The world of Elemental is devastated, broken by a war of magic. Scattered across the desolation are channelers, beings capable of accessing the shards and the magic they contain. This ability has made them mighty sovereigns of the kingdoms and empires who seek to spread their dominion across the world. The world, however, will not be conquered easily. The Cataclysm has awakened ancient powers who claim vast wildlands across the world. Before the Channelers can conquer each other, they must first conquer the land itself. Hello viewers, I'm Grimoth, and this is Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes, requested by Dolwyn87 as part of the rewarding, the rewarding the Rewarders opportunity I offered back in 2013. He asked that I play this game for 7 hours? I think I can do that. Might even throw in a little more. I am, uh, just check to make sure that I'm recording, because I'm so professional. Good! Uh, I'm actually catching this during Steam's free weekend of Fallen Enchantress Legendary Hero, at which point the uh, game's actually 75% off. Now there's a long and storied history with this game and its predecessor. That's something that you can Google search on your own. Suffice to say that uh, Stardock is behind this game, and the, uh, well, like I said, you can Google search. I trust you. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the game like I am, I've only saw, I only saw some gameplay of it, like, late 2013. Uh, fear not. We're gonna do a tutorial together. Yay, tutorial. <laughs> I read the instruction manual. I don't know how up-to-date it is. You know, strategy games have a tendency to change these days with all the various versions. Like, try, uh, try reading, a uh, Europa Universalis 4's instruction manual compared to how the game is now. The Legendary Heroes tutorial is designed to walk novice players to the basics of leading a magical kingdom. Building cities, casting spells, and fighting battles are all covered. I would like to start a tutorial game, thank you. Keep your troop roster updated as new technologies... Well, can't really read Welcome that Welcome to the Legendary Heroes tutorial. Here you will be learning how to found your capital, use magic, expand your kingdom, and fight off your enemies. The tutorial will always show your current objective at the top of the screen. If you get stuck, left click on the objective bar to remind you of your current task. First you will want to find a plot of land suitable for your capital. Left click to select your sovereign unit, then right click to move them. If your units have run out of moves, you may need to press the turn button to advance to the next season. To start a city, you will need to find a tile with resource yields which are represented by a yield overlay on that tile. Higher grain yields will allow for bigger cities. Higher material yields will provide cities with increased production. And higher essence yields will allow you to cast additional enchantments on that city. Once on a tile with yields, press the Settle button to build your capital. This has got to be one of the more uh, lovely tutorials I have ever seen in all of my years of playing video games. Complete with videos. <laughs> Alright, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes, uh, beyond just the whole tutorial thing, this is a turn-based strategy game. Created by Stardock, the same makers of Galactic Civilizations. That entire franchise, yes. Um, seeing as how I'm endeavoring to fit all seven hours of gameplay in one sitting, uh... Any tips or advice that you provide, I probably won't end up utilizing. That's not to say that you aren't welcome to post things, just note that, like how me reading an instruction manual for the first time and just basically thumbing through it doesn't get all that information stuck in my head, you throwing 39 lines of advice in the comments, it's all just a blur. If I ever do pick up the game again, I'm sure I will forget most if not everything you've just said. So keep that in mind. Veterans of this game, you're going to want to turn off the video. You haven't done so already. I promise you, you will do nothing but waste your time. And I am a big proponent of you not wasting your time. Let's go ahead and move our uh, 
sovereign here. That would be the Lady Prosipone. And I think, according to the instruction manual, her faction is a faction which is devoted to... Uh, the designer notes suggest that she's the best for, like, enchantment stuff or things, you know? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, there's sovereigns and champions, and there's heroes in this game. They have their own traits which factor into things. She has an entire trait tree because she can gain levels. She has magic. Which could factor into all the things that you'd like to do with magic. I'd actually like to see a grid. Thank you. I like grids. Go ahead and settle. Might as well settle the city there. Improvements can provide your city with a number of bonuses that range from increasing your research to providing every unit trained in the city with a special trait. In order to construct improvements, you will want to use the city's build menu. Use the list to select an improvement, then click the build button to begin construction. Improvements take multiple seasons to construct. As your production increases, the number of seasons required will be reduced. Many improvements can be upgraded. Keep this in mind when constructing improvements, as upgrades can be crucial to the future of your city's development. Alright. You've built your capital, giving the wandering people of the world safe haven. Select your city, and then click the Build button to construct your first improvement. Now, we built a city by a river. Does that count as being next to a source of fresh water? Yeah? I'd like to hope, right? Alright, so we shall click on the city, we selected build, start building a study. Alright, study, demolish, clear forest, looks like that's the one thing that's open to us. Now you can actually set the options for you to manually place these improvements within the confines of your city area, but we'll just do that. And it chooses a location there to build the study. New equipment, improvements, units, spells, and diplomatic options can all be unlocked through researching new technologies. To change your research, click the research button on the main screen and choose a technology in the Civilization, Warfare, or Magic tech trees. Civilization techs will help you improve your cities and strengthen your economy by unlocking new improvements and faction bonuses. Warfare techs will help strengthen your military by providing new weaponry, equipment, and training techniques for your units. Magic techs will increase your magical prowess by unlocking new spells and magical items. Finalize your selection by clicking the Done button. Any prerequisite technologies to the one you have selected will be added to the research queue. Okay. Research Mining. Many have flocked to your city. Amongst them are several scholars who wish to aid in the pursuit of new knowledge. It would be wise to research mining, which will allow us to tap into the precious metals of the world. Click the research bar at the top of the screen, and select Mining as your technology to be researched. Well, I will do just that. You can cast any strategic spell known by your sovereign or any champion you control from the spellbook on the main screen. Strategic spells can be cast on the main map. Tactical spells can only be cast in combat. To cast a spell, select it in the spellbook and click the Cast Spell button. Most spells require a specific target. If so, you will then be prompted to select that target before the spell is cast. Okay. While well, improvements can help specialize your cities, there are several spells that can provide bonuses as well. Click on the spell book to cast the spell Inspiration on your city to magically aid your research. Alright. Spells. Inspiration. Produces plus one research in the enchanted city provided by uh, our Sovereign herself. And I choose this. Sovereign cast it. Get plus one research. As you explore the world, you will come across notable locations. Most hold lost treasures, including equipment, items, or resources. They can be identified by the green treasure chest icon that hangs above them. To claim a notable location, 
Simply move a champion or your sovereign unit onto that tile. All right. Now that your city is growing and you are researching, it's time to explore the world. Move your sovereign to the east where an equipment cache is rumored to hold lost treasure. Whoa. Didn't expect to scroll that fast. Pressing the arrow key there. It's some serious speed. Could probably tone that down. Maybe I should. Okay. We'll uh, get to work on that then. But it'll take us uh, until next... Ooh. Auto in turn function, huh? That's... I don't like that. Uh, I choose you. Get out of my face. Uh, do not auto-turn me. Unacceptable. Alright, capture the equipment cache. We're still working on that. Let's do it. A case contains an old spear, a veteran of many battles. Despite its age and the countless battles it has been used in, it is still a formidable weapon. In the train menu, you can enlist the help of several types of units. If exploration is your goal, select the scout and press the train button. If you are looking to expand your kingdom, you can instead train pioneer units. They can settle new cities and establish outposts to claim new territory. If you wish to increase your military might, you will find militia available for training initially. As you research additional technologies, new military units will be unlocked. You can press the design button if you want to create custom unit types with the weapons, armor, and traits you have available. In addition, as your technology level improves, your newly trained units will come outfitted with better equipment. The units you have already trained can also be manually upgraded, provided they are within your borders. Keep in mind that a city cannot train a unit and construct an improvement at the same time, so manage your city queue accordingly. Okay. There appears to be an iron ore deposit to the east. Before we can build a mine there, we will need to prepare a pioneer to expand your borders. Select your city and click train to start a pi tra start training a pioneer unit. Uh, let's see here. This guiding spear is two-handed. It has some things. It ignores a third of the victim's defense. You're immune to counterattack, and you can strike an opponent and whoever is behind them. Okay. Checking out her equipment screen, she currently has the Queen's Staff. So this is most certainly... Hey, also, enchantments on this unit have no maintenance. Ooh, lovely crown. Yeah, we'd want to put that on her instead. Spiffy. I mean, it's not exactly like you'd want to go meleeing with her a whole lot, I imagine, compared to other sovereigns you could start with, but it's a thing. Also, traits and what have you. I already took a look at that earlier. Okay, anyway. I want to choose the city here. We're currently working on the study, but we're not allowed to finish that. Because you want us to... train a pioneer unit. Understanding and managing the finances of your kingdom is vital to your nation's growth. Having a steady stream of Gildar is essential in order to pay your army's wages. In addition, surplus Gildar can be used in a variety of ways, from taking advantage of an opportunity in a quest, to recruiting and outfitting champions. The most direct way to control your finances is by changing your tax rate. As you raise taxes, your income will increase, along with your unrest level. The higher your unrest, the less research and production your cities will provide. The tax slider on the main screen will tell you the potential results of adjusting your tax rate as you change it. To see the details of your economic breakdown, click on your total Gildar at the top of the screen. Okay. Your advisors have suggested that you lower your tax rate to speed up production of your pioneer units. Use the tax slider at the top of the screen to do this, so and it's not going to require me to adjust the queue then. Cool. So currently we have an unrest rate of 21%. I, oh. Yay! 
Unit at the lower tax rate will take several seasons for your Pioneer unit to be trained. Use this time to explore the east and see what other mysteries lie beneath the fog. Maybe I will. Explore the east while training your Pioneer. With my character, who has no moves. Uh, we researched that tech, and that's cool. Looks like we got nothing but basic technologies open to us for this tutorial, so... I guess I'll just sit you on that. Oh yeah, that did, that did uh, increase production very quickly. Okay. There's the iron ore that was mentioned. Uh, forest slows down movement, now that I'm surprised. See if we can do this. There we go. I gave us some extra vision. End our turn. Go on then. Go on then. Wait, what? Pioneers are a necessity when expanding your kingdom. They can be used to settle a city or construct an outpost. If you're looking to build further from civilization, perhaps to capture a resource node or expand your borders, you may want to build an outpost. Outposts have the advantage of not requiring any yields in order to be built. Unlike cities, outposts will not produce tax revenue or have a construction queue. To build an outpost, simply select a pioneer and click the outpost button. If your pioneer is tasked with settling a new city, knowing where to place it is of the utmost importance. Every city will have varied potential based on the yields of the tile it was founded on. Settle on a tile with high grain yields if you want a large city. Settle on high material yields if you want a city with maximum productivity. Settle on high essence yields if you want to fill your city with magical enchantments. As your nation expands and founds additional cities, your populace will take more effort to manage. This will lead to a global increase in unrest levels for each new city you construct. To found a city, select a pioneer and click the settle button. Be wary when placing a city or outpost near a monster's lair. If your borders expand over a lair, it will release the monster to roam and attack your realm. Okay. So it looks like for the purposes of this tutorial, we had speed production. Okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind, game. Pioneer unit pops out all the way over here. Uh, I wonder if I could make that pop out, like, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it for this damn tutorial. We'll go ahead and put it there. Good to work, lady. Or maybe an auto pop said. Whatever. Mousing over. Can I hold down the right mouse button and get a better readout? No. That'll have to do then. I could turn on quick move as well, I'm sure, to make this uh, trip go a bit faster. But I'm in no rush. Continue to explore around here, see what other sorts of fun and excitement and adventure there can be in this tutorial. You know, I don't like auto-passing. Let's just handle that myself. Don't trust it. So many strategy games. Civilization 4 comes to mind wonderfully. There we go. Go on then. Go on then. Ooh. Another prize, an old battlefield. Pioneer unit goes here. And... We can snag that old battlefield next turn. We also have some, what, like, corrupted marshlands there, or what? That juju land? Beats me. Oh, I have idle cities that could be doing something this turn. Eh, it's the tutorial. Whatever, I can't care. I did it now, didn't I? 
Yeah? Well, I found an item. I could apparently summon a burning wraith. That's cool. Now, I think... Hmm. I thought I would be able to build something there. Maybe I can just do that? Champions are the heroes of the world of Elemental. They gain levels, cast spells, and acquire items, much like your sovereign. As your faction accumulates fame over time, new champions will offer to join you. When they do, you will be presented with a choice between different champions. Pick wisely as there is no guarantee the ones you decline will return in the future. You can increase your nation's fame by building certain improvements, and by completing quests. Quests can be found scattered throughout the world, and are easily identified by the scroll icon above their tile. In order to undertake a quest, simply walk a champion or your sovereign into that tile and follow the instructions. Okay. Active quests will be added to the quest tracker on the left side of the screen. You can click on a quest to be taken to the location of its next objective. Please move your sovereign onto the quest location on the map to continue. Mm. That one. Very well then. There are rumors of a gathering darkness in the forest east of your realm. Undertake a quest to raise your fame and attract the help of a champion. Oh, we'll just have to move you back then, my dear. Okay, well, we'll just move you there next turn. Uh, okay, now you're working on the iron mine. So basically, I click on the resource that I want you to improve. Got it. Go there. Is it done automatically? It is done automatically. That's fascinating. I tell you what, why don't you just build a scout anyway? Let's, uh... No, 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 let's not argue with the tutorial here. I'm sure the tutorial knows what it's doing. A humble inn. A wide-eyed young man approaches you, visibly shaken. Rats, they're everywhere. They've infested my family's burial grounds. I will give you a doom club if you help me. Will you assist him? Doesn't look like I have a no option, but thou must. They're out the rat nest, it is. Looks like it's there. See what I can do about that. The rats gave you a few scratches, but you've cleared them from the ruin. Return to the inn and report that the deed is done. You take one of the rats you've killed as proof that the job is done. You place the rat's corpse at the young man's feet. Your word would have been enough, he says. But about that doom club, it's not in good condition. Would you rather have some Gildar? Hmm. Hmm. I'll take the Gildar. Yay! Yay! Amazing. I see. Go on, then. So we've got... Hannes here, and a Tholo. No unit specializations. Looks like you're an Earth Apprentice. Looks like you're a Fire Apprentice. You've got Ironeer Blood, which gives you some spell resistance and hit points per level. Tactical spells cost 50% more. We've got Altarian Blood here on this one. I shall choose you, a Tholo. Look at him bow and everything. There are many threats in the world of Elemental, including enemy factions and monsters who owe allegiance to no one. No matter the enemy, there are common things you should watch out for when judging the potential danger of any unit. As a first indicator, all units in the game are broken into one of five increasing threat levels. Weak, medium, strong, deadly, and epic. In general, 
Units will find a fairly even fight against enemies with the same threat level, while they will struggle against units of a higher level. Threat levels, however, cannot tell you everything you need to know. It's important to consider the specific spells, special abilities, and statistics of units on both sides of a close matchup. For instance, abilities like immunities to certain damage types can swing a battle dramatically in some fights, yet be completely useless in others. Choosing the correct battles to engage in, and those you should avoid, will be essential to ensuring your victory. Alright. Well, I'm sure I'll screw that up. The rumors are true. A deadly earth elemental has awoken in the eastern forest. Send your sovereign and champion to attack this monster before it threatens your kingdom. Alright, maybe I will. It's over there. Lothalo, move over here. Cool. Let's take a look at you closer, Lothalo. He's got a history associated with him. I don't have time for that. He's got a basic axe. Which I, I could have uh, given him the Doom Club. Hmm. Alright. Cool. You can trade items between the two characters. Well, there's no need for that. There's no exact shop nearby as well. I'll get to work on this fight then. Oops, I didn't join them together as a group. Eh? Uh, eh? I just select them both, maybe. Hmm. I know you can have, like, group units together. I suppose I'll just select them both. There, here we go. There we go. There we go. Maybe not. Did it just go back to... Hmm. All right. Sure. Okay. Now I theoretically have you both selected. That means you'll both act together when I do this. You attack your enemy's forces. Two units to one unit. A lesser earth elemental. Versus the powerful might of a sovereign and a champion. Let us do battle, because I can't auto-resolve. Tactical battles pit two opposing forces against each other, giving the player more control over the outcome of combat. Units take turns based on their initiative values. The higher the initiative, the sooner a unit will be able to take its turn. During a turn, the active unit can move a number of tiles up to its maximum moves, and then take an action. Actions consist of attacking, casting a spell, or using a special ability, and are displayed at the bottom of the screen near the current unit's portrait. Where you position your units during battle is of vital importance. By surrounding an enemy, you can provide swarm bonuses for your units during melee attacks. Be mindful that the enemy can take advantage of swarm bonuses as well. The initiative list on the left side of the screen can be used as a reference for what order units will be taking their turn. In addition, some spells have casting times. When you are channeling a spell with a casting time, you can use the initiative list to check when it will finish casting. Click the play button if you would like the AI to take over for you. Resume manual control by pressing the pause button. Instantly resolve the rest of a battle by pressing the auto resolve button. Combat will end when all forces from one side are defeated. Fantastic. It's like I don't even have to do my own commentary for this video. It's beautiful. Alright. So we have... Alright, we can't... There's no other thing to scroll around here. We've got the Lady. We've got a Follow. We have the Earth Elemental. Looks like his movement range cannot reach anyone. Uh... Hmm. What kind of options do we have here? Chaos does a random effect to target enemy until they resist. Unless they resist. Okay. Well, how about we play with this whole chaos thing? This sounds fine. Resist chance 30%? Ah! Uh, but, ma'am! Hmm, can I not move 
you. Oh, I'm probably clicking the wrong damn button to move it. It looks like there is other area of this battlefield, and I'm just stupid. Well, I guess I just have to take that. Okay, cool. Pass. He comes stalking after... Uh, the Earth Elemental comes stalking after you. Uh, maybe... Maybe... Maybe we'll try Chaos again for fun. Yay! There will be no chaos. Let's join up these two characters here. Fine. What about... Neener, 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 neener. Earth Elemental, are you special? You're special, aren't you? Yes, you are. Pass. Okay. Uh oh. That wasn't exactly the best idea I ever had. I, I, she has a melee weapon. Right. 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 A pale feature. Okay, that's cool. Uh. Chaos! Yay! Kick its ass! There's the swarm thing in action. We win! We used all that mana unnecessarily. We win. Woo! Thanks for playing the Legendary Heroes tutorial. Now try out all of the things you've just learned in a new game. Well, that was pretty exciting, everyone. I think we'll call that an end of the video. We've learned so much. Uh, join me next time when... I reckon I tackle a new game. Woo!